to make my walk. Welcome to my vlog. Let me tell you what I've been up to for the last two months. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I've been doing the new hexagon Millifiore and I've posted updates on my rosette number four. And I don't know why, but I just couldn't move beyond this center. I'm looking at it now, it looks perfectly fine, but at the time, I just couldn't get beyond it. So one day, out of frustration, I just went to my stash, I cut new fabric, made it all over again, and finally, it is done. And the exciting moment is to lay it all out with all the other hexagon rosettes and see how the colors lie and how it all works together. It's just so much fun. This is getting to be a really big quilt. As you can see, I only have four more rosettes to do. By laying them all out like this, it gave me an idea of what color my next rosette will be. Here's my 4th of July quilt, installment number five. I need to make 16 of these large blocks. And if you watched my last vlog, you know that no two are the same. And yes, that is a partial seam in the middle. And though it sounds scary, truly, once you know how to do them, they're pretty straightforward. Then I need to lay them all out to make sure that <laughs> I've actually done it right. There was one moment of panic, but it turned out right in the end. Unfortunately, I'm at the point where now I have to remove papers. Nobody looks forward to doing this. There's no shortcut. It's just tedious, painstaking work. And it goes on and on and on. You also need to be careful at the edges of your blocks because you can't pull too hard on them, otherwise they will open and you'll have to re-sew them. Finally, all the papers are out and I can sew the border blocks on. I'm officially halfway done. Now to do it all again with the next half. My third project that I'm working on is my sugary do. I was really quite happy. I was keeping up with it, laid it all out, and then I realized there was one more row. I hadn't caught up with the latest one. So I worked on that. It's called Mowed Lawn. And then the minute that I finished and it's done, guess what? She announced her next one. So cannot believe it. We've done nine rows out of 12. We're in the home stretch now. I took an online class with Peter Byrne of Hover Quilting on his Cityscapes quilt. Peter won two of the top prizes at QuiltCon this year and his Cityscape quilt was one of them. The course was well organized and there was a kit that you could purchase if you wanted to. I just love the texture of the over quilting and the straight line quilting. And instead of making it into a wall quilt, I made mine into a pillow. I also participated in my guild's charity quilt. Using an improv technique, I combined all the blocks together to make the top, and I documented it in my last video, and I'll put a link in the notes below. For someone whose favorite color is not blue, I seem to be making a heck of a lot of blue quilts lately. Just look at how my scrap string block has grown. So for a YouTuber, one of the worst things that could possibly happen is your hard drive with all your movie assets on it crashes. Now, luckily I had mine backed up, but the way that iMovie works, it's a big library and unfortunately that was not recoverable. I had proactively started taking a class on Premiere Pro about two months ago, but I had hesitated switching over to the new program because it's just so complex and I'm always seemingly behind the eight ball with making movies. Uh, but if I was looking for a sign, this was it. So now I am making my YouTube videos in a new program. 
I hope you notice there's a difference in sound. That's one of the main reasons why I want it to move over. I have more control over all the different tracks. But that was a big headache and I'm still dealing with it. And I felt it in other parts of my life. When I go to sew, I'm not always making the best decisions. You know, I go to sew and I end up organizing all my plastic bags. And I go to sew and instead I end up getting into my scrap bucket and organizing all my scraps. And then I go to sew and what I do is just so poorly done that I end up having to rip it all out. And that's what I did with this project. I should have known, I could see it was going wrong, but I just kept pushing myself through it anyways. And finally I stopped <laughs> before I damaged the top. I've ripped it all out and I will do it again when I'm less tired. And last week in a moment of frustration when I realized that I hadn't actually completed a quilt putting binding on it, for probably three months, maybe four, I got out my Meadowland quilt. I remembered that I had received this gift of this specialized batting. This is from Birdie Bird Quilts, and this batting comes with a layer of flannel on it. And this means that you don't need any pins, you don't need any basing spray, and it has taken me a year before I've actually found the right project for it. It's a big piece. So, and my metal line quilt is 60 by 80. So I laid it all out on my bed. And just before I was about to sew it, I took a look at the instructions and found that I had the, the batting down wrong. The flannel is supposed to be on the bottom side. And I just rearranged it all and laid it out properly and then started to sew. What I'm doing here is dot to dot quilting. I learned this technique in a class with Melissa Marginette. And before I started quilting, I planned out this design. And for a quilt this size, I would say it took me between five to six hours in two different sessions. And I must say, I was very pleasantly surprised. It did lie flat. I didn't have any problems with puckering. And the added layer of flannel made my quilt just that little bit heavier, which I wanted in this quilt. To square up my quilt, I take it downstairs to my island and I use a combination of my ruler and my laser square to cut a nice straight edge. I put a one inch binding on it to give it a frame. I use navy and I am pretty happy with the results. This is my first finish probably in a while. I have been working very hard with my mental health the last little while. My son is doing better. He just completed his sixth and final chemo treatment. He's in a good frame of mind. He's looking forward to moving back home and getting his life back on track. But you know, the outside world is still in flux and he is still in flux and therefore my life is still in flux. And I've been working hard, doing breathing exercises, trying to stay active, but mostly I've been trying to reach out to my friends because I just miss my friends so much. I've been reaching out to new friends. I've been reaching out to old friends. And one of the best things that happened to me this month is I put out on my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube the question, why did you start quilting? 
and the response from quilters from all over the world has just absolutely been amazing. I love hearing these stories. I love reading these stories. If you haven't seen it, go to my feed and take a look at them. The stories will fill you with warmth. They just make you realize this wonderful, incredible community that we belong to. People come to quilting to be with family members. They come to quilting to remember family members. They come to quilting to give family love. And we all have that in common. And I hope you share your story too. So I think that's all I have for this month. Look for me next week when I'll have another video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts or on my website, JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.